everyone, I hope you're all doing really well and welcome back to another video and welcome back to my YouTube channel. For anyone who's new here, I'm Becca, I'm a professional pet portrait and wildlife artist specialising in realistic drawings of animals in coloured pencils and on my YouTube channel I share a lot of the behind the scenes. So this video is going to be all about my preparation for my workshop everything that kind of goes into a workshop, all the planning behind it. And basically I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna get up to up until the day of the workshop. So as of today, we've got 20 days until my workshop. Today is the 1st of October. My workshop is on the 20th of October, which is a Sunday. And I've got a lot to do before then. So what I've done so far is I have drawn out what we're gonna be drawing, which is these three little deer. I thought I wanted to do something very autumnal using those kind of like brown colours. I wanted to do something that was still really realistic but something that people could actually take home that was finished that they could literally frame. Sometimes I feel like when you do like, like the last workshop that I did I drew a horse's eye um, like a six by six horse's eye study and it was really realistic and it took about two and a half hours to teach and we still didn't really finish all the little bits that I would have liked to have just finished off. We kind of ran out of time. So this time around, I'm kind of bearing that in mind and thinking, do something a bit more simple that I know that we can finish within that two hours. When I was drawing this, I didn't actually film it, but I did note down all of the colours that I used in the right order. And I took pictures of this drawing throughout at various stages. So I need to make a list basically of everything that I need to do on the run up to the workshop in terms of getting everything prepared, everything organised because I don't want the workshop to come around and me be ordering things last minute. Like I want as less stress as possible so it can run nice and smoothly. This is also the first workshop that I'm putting on by myself. So I want it to come across as professional and like I've got everything in order and like I know what I'm doing, which I feel like I do, but I just need to make sure I leave enough time to, to stay organised. So what I've done already is obviously that drawing. I've also designed the front cover of the workshop booklet so i'm going to print out a booklet like this for everyone who's attending the workshop and inside is going to be pictures of the drawing at various stages with the colors um, or that specific technique that we're using next to it with drawing and especially drawing realistically a lot of people work at completely different speeds people are a lot quicker they might be a few steps ahead some people might fall behind, they might need an extra little bit of guidance here and there if they've never drawn before. So I feel like having this booklet for everyone to refer to is a good thing because people can go a few steps ahead if they want to, or if they miss a step then they've got this to refer to. So I'm going to include like the main steps in here, keep it to like a couple of pages maximum. At the minute I've sold six tickets and I feel like that's really good because initially it's always very scary when you're doing like an event or anything basically by yourself and promoting it by yourself you think, oh God, what if no one buys a ticket? But luckily, like the first day that I put the workshop out there, someone bought it straight away. And then a few days after, a group of three people bought it. And then that afternoon, another two people bought it. And I feel like because there's 20 days left now until the workshop, people might buy them nearer the time if they know that they can attend. So yeah, fingers crossed we sell out, but six is still a really good number to have in the class. So I'm pretty happy with that for my first ever one that I've kind of put on by myself. Although I've drawn this out, I didn't film it. So I think I'm gonna draw this out again and film it like I would be filming a tutorial. So it's kind of fresh in my mind as to everything that I'm explaining. And then I can use some of those techniques in the booklet. In the back of the booklet, I think I'll put a link to the video. So if they want to work through it again, then they can do via a video. I also need to draw out all of the outlines for the drawing. So everyone's got all the proportions accurate and the, the line art ready to go. So we can literally just get stuck in straight away with the colour pencils. So if 10 people end up buying the tickets, that means I've got to draw 10 outlines, which will take me a while. I'm actually going to be working on the Strathmore Bristol vellum for this workshop. I think it's a really good paper for beginners. It's like quite smooth so it's really easy to blend. The craft knife slice tool works incredibly well. That's actually what I've used for all the little like spots on the back to get those patterns. In terms of pencils I need to kind of go through all of the stock that I've got. I have got a list of all the colours that I've used already so I kind of need to go through my pencils and see quantities of each colour. Luckily, when I did the workshop of the horse's eye study in London last year, 
I ordered quite a few extra pencils. There were seven people that attended that workshop, so I do have quite a lot of spares. And I feel like the horse's eye and the deer are very similar colours, so I'm going to see what I actually need to order, but hopefully it shouldn't be that many new pencils. Ideally, I want every single person that's attending the workshop to have one of each colour that they need. The only thing that I do need to order more of, actually, is the craft knife slice tool. Um because I actually use this, like I said, for those little patterns on the back of the deer. It works really well on that surface. So yeah, I'm going to get a few more of those for my workshop and I think that's pretty much it. So materials, outlines, booklet, redraw the deers, get everything fresh in my mind and record it. I think I might also go to the range and get like a few decorative autumnal bits for the table just to keep it dead like cosy. <laughs> an autumnal and stuff like that. I don't want it just to be a plain table in like a white room. We need a bit of something going on. I think whenever you're putting an event on like this or a workshop or something kind of by yourself, you do need to promote it a lot and use email marketing especially to your advantage because then you can target those specific people that you know are interested in workshops or your work in general. Really think about the location that you're going to be doing the workshop. Is it easy for people to get to? Is it a big enough room, a big enough space? How much does it cost to hire the room? How many tickets will you need to sell to make that back and more profit? Refreshments, will they be having a drink or nibbles or anything when they're there? There's so many things to think about but I feel like I've got it all pretty much in order now. I have posted about it quite a few times on Instagram as well, but I feel like, to me, it might feel like I'm just constantly on about it, but you need to keep it fresh in people's minds because you think when you go on Instagram, you're just bombarded with so many different things, something that you've seen two seconds ago, you've already forgotten about. So bear that in mind and don't feel like you, you're posting about it so much because the likelihood is people will need that extra nudge, like they might be on the edge and think, oh, I might buy that and then you might not post about it for another three weeks and by that point they're like, they've got plans and they can't come. So if you keep it in front of people and make people aware that you're doing this workshop on a certain date, then they're more likely to be kind of persuaded to come, if that makes sense. So yeah, don't feel like you're overly posting, just keep it in front of people. Try not to come across as too salesy or too pushy instead focus more on the the value that you're going to be given in the workshop and really make people visualize what it's going to be like when they're there i think that's my best advice for like the preparation but yeah so i'm gonna sort all those things out this afternoon and i will try and film little bits for you as and when on the run up to the workshop i found the sheet before where i'd listed all of the colors that i used for the deer drawing and i've actually put a little like technique or what i actually did with that color next to it so that makes life a bit easier when I start to make the booklet up. And I'm gonna check what colours I've got in stock um, using the colour list that I've got here and see what I need to order. So I've got three boxes full of just spares from my previous workshop. I've got loads in here. And then this is what I use all the time when I'm working on tutorials and commissions. This just usually stays on my desk over there. So I'm gonna check everything, make a pile of each colour and see all the quantities of each colour and see what I need to order. everything into separate piles these are the colors that we're going to be using and this is my sheet with all the colors on it that I made a note of when I first drew the three deers I feel like you can often achieve the same outcome by using a variety of different colors in a variety of different orders it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to use these again when I draw it the second time I might try and use some of the colors that I've got more of for example I've only got one of the um, raw umber 10% and I've only got one of the warm earth 40% so ideally I'd like to use some of the colours that I've got quite a lot of here as a bit of a substitute for these. I've got quite a lot of the beastry pencils, I've got a lot of browns in here. In terms of the rest of them I have got quite a few already so I'm just going to order like the odd couple here and there where I need to. So I've been through all my pencil stock this morning I've just filmed my next podcast episode. My throat now feels really like itchy because I've just been 
talking for about an hour and a half. So just to give my voice a bit of a break, I'm going to start drawing out all of the outlines, I think. I use graphite transfer paper for my outlines. It's the best thing ever. I do have a video all about how I draw my initial outlines, which I'll link below. And I've also linked the actual transfer paper that I use. I use graphite transfer paper rather than carbon paper. I think a lot of people get confused between the two of them. Carbon paper, you can't erase the outlines. It's made so it doesn't smudge. Whereas with graphite paper, you can quite easily remove those lines because it's graphite. But yeah, for me, that's the quickest and easiest way to achieve like perfectly proportioned outlines. So yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing this afternoon. I'm probably going to put a podcast on and just kind of get on with it one after another. It's going to be a bit of a tedious job, but once it's done, that's like a big thing out of the way then. So I'm about to start filming the 3 d and I'm going to see if I can get it done well under two hours. So I've finished my second drawing of the deer. So what I'm gonna do is edit this into a tutorial, put all the clips together and see how long it actually is. Um, I feel like it is definitely under two hours, but obviously with all the refining and the little bits at the end, you know, I don't really wanna be pushing it for time, but I'm pretty confident that it's under two hours and that we'll be able to get it done in the time. So this was my first attempt and this was my second attempt, but yeah, exactly the same size exactly the same colours used. Um, so at least now I know that, you know, the colours that I picked out the other day are definitely the colours that I am gonna need for the tutorial. So I know exactly what I need to order now. I thought I'd come in here for a change because I've got packaging stuff everywhere in my studio. So I'm currently in my room um, and literally I just sat down to start filming and then I got a delivery from Jackson's Art which is so good because I literally ordered my pencils and stuff for my workshop yesterday afternoon and they've already arrived so that's good. So I'm just going to unbox these and give you an update as to what I got on with yesterday. So I filmed the deer again and I've not actually edited it yet, I'm going to edit it this afternoon um, but I feel like it is way under two hours so i feel like we'll be fine um i didn't feel like i was drawing for ages i would have just done it from start to finish but with all the background noise and stuff i have to keep kind of stopping and starting but i feel like it still is within two hours which is good so once i'd redrawn the deer i knew exactly what pencils i needed to order then um which is what i did and they've already arrived which is so good i'm using a really old craft knife slice tool that i've got kind of went quite blunt so I just use it now for opening packages. I feel like it's quite a big box just for pencils. Here are some of the extra pencils that I ordered that they've boxed really nicely. Here's the Dia series that I drew the other day 
and this is the very first one that I did. So now I've got two examples that I can take to my workshop. I think I'm going to get one of them framed and then have the other one just loose for people to kind of have a closer look at and hand round. I spent quite a few hours yesterday as well drawing out all of the outlines. So I've literally got, like look at all these, <laughs> all ready to go. Um, so yeah, that took me a long time, but at least they're all done. I've got eight, which means there's one for me at the workshop, there's one for everyone, and there should be at least one spare. I can always do a few more. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to get the bulk of them done yesterday. So I'm just keeping everything protected for now in my Strathmore Bristol vellum pad. And this afternoon I want to edit the DA tutorial and make the booklet for my workshop. I forgot I ordered some extra erasers just to have on the table. And I also got these pencil extenders. They were actually so much cheaper than buying like a brand new pencil. So I thought, well, I'll just get a few of these because some of the spares that I've got of the pencils are quite short and stubby. And not everyone can work with them, especially if you're new to drawing, it's quite difficult to work with a small pencil. Um, so yeah, I've just got a few of these that I'm going to take to the workshop as well. So I'm going to unpackage all of these boxes and then count the quantities of the pencils again and we should be pretty much set. I'm starting to develop a little corner of all of my materials that I can box up before I head to the workshop next week. <laughs> These are cute to put in a little vase. Hmm. Doesn't really nice smell one. like much. Successful day in terms of the decorations. I got this from B&M. It's quite cheap, but I'll literally use it in here anyway. I need a new one because the old one that I've got in this room is falling to bits. So this is gonna be replacing it. But I thought it was quite autumnal with the dried grass and it'll just be nice to put on the table so it's not completely plain. I also went to a pumpkin patch yesterday, seeing as it's nearly Halloween. Um, I got a big one that we ended up painting, but I also picked up three little ones like this, which I also thought would look really nice on the table, just as a bit of decoration. I've just ordered two more craft knife slice tools. I already have two, but I just wanted a couple more to kind of spread around the middle of the table for people to use as and when for the details of the deer more towards the end of the drawing. I also ordered a wooden frame, which is exactly the same as the ones behind me. I think I'm actually gonna take this framed drawing of three little lambs, as well as a framed drawing of the little ducklings and one of my, I've drawn the deer twice now, so I'm gonna frame that with the frames that are arriving and take that as another example. <laughs> So this morning I printed out all my booklets for my workshop and stapled them all together. I designed this last night actually and then just printed everything this morning but it has the full materials list and then the eight main steps for achieving the realistic deer drawing. And then we've got the finished piece at the end um, with the QR code to the video. So if you want to draw these deer again and want to watch the video version then they can do. That's an option. All my outlines and everything are ready in here. I'm going to take that whole pad just in case we need some extra paper and then i've also ordered some mdf boards these are from amazon i think there's seven of them in here seven or eight uh, which is perfect for how many is coming to the workshop 
but I just thought if the table is slightly rigid, we can't really put our paper directly onto the table and then draw because it's going to have that texture of the table underneath. So I thought everyone could have one of these MDF boards so they're drawing on a smooth surface. And I can always use these again for future workshops. My frame is arriving tomorrow so I can frame one of my idea drawings and take that as an example. And yeah, not long to go now. Today is Friday, Friday evening. So I've got tomorrow just to organise everything. And then Sunday at half 12, I'll be heading to Stanley House for the workshop. So I'll take you along with me. My frames have arrived this morning, my A4 frame. So I'm going to get the deer framed um, and I'll show you what it looks like once I've done it. just frame my deer which I'm going to display on the table for my workshop tomorrow I think I'm also going to take this lamb series because they're very similar in terms of being like small little drawings the only annoying thing is I think I ordered the wrong frames in terms of the size of the mounts because if you look at the difference I think the mount is half the size on, on this one so the drawings are both A4 size but the frames are slightly different but it's not the end of the world i've also framed my little duckling series as well so i think i'm going to take all three and just display them at the end of the table whilst we're drawing i've also got these two mini easels that i got from amazon literally years ago they've been behind my printer so i thought these would work for displaying my artwork at the end of the table um, and they're quite sturdy actually so i'm going to take them with me i've got a pile of all my stuff over there so here is everything that i'm going to be taking i think i might take this tripod if i do a bit of filming whilst the workshop's going on, whilst everyone's drawing, just to get a bit of content. But yeah, all my pencils, all the outlines are in there. I've got my MDF boards, I've got more filming equipment, my easels. So I'm gonna bubble wrap all three of these up and I'm gonna start putting everything into a box so it's easy enough to put into the boot of the car, ready to set off to Stanley House in the morning. So I've packed everything up, I've got all the main stuff in that box. I'm going to do another entire video on how the actual workshop went and try and get some clips from the actual workshop tomorrow. But I'm going to leave this video here. So thank you so much for watching my workshop preparation video. If you enjoyed it, then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to see more art related content, videos like this and artist vlogs. But yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll let you know how tomorrow goes. Fingers crossed it all goes to plan.